Hello everybody. Nice to have you here. Today I will proceed about API Mesh. And if you miss like an intro video there, it's I hope it's a previous one, so feel free, jump there, have a look. Uh, today I will tell a bit another use cases, like more complex use cases, how we used uh, API Mesh on the, our last project. And let's, let's have a look on it. So, just imagine we have the Adobe Camera system, we have the front-end system, which already implemented against Adobe Commerce GraphQL, means it has already fully implemented front-end that's using the Adobe, GraphQL, Adobe Commerce GraphQL and using it in standard manner. So, assume it's IEM, Adobe Experience Manager, or assume it's PWA, for example, which using the standard GraphQL layer. And now the client is coming and telling, hey, we don't have an images in stored in your system. We have an images stored on our digital asset management system. And uh, while providing them, so there's like terabytes of images, we don't want to store them on Adobe Commerce or on Magento, whatever. I mean, why shall we pay for two different, let's say, storages and that's duplication of the content. Image got managed in another place, Adobe Commerce has own, it's technically an application. It's nothing to, to do with uh, digital asset management. So we have a links to the images. And uh, Magento usually store in images like relative paths and the images are stored into the file system and if you, you can use Amazon S3 also, but that's not Amazon, it's like fully own, own, own system. And uh, they will just provide you the links to, to the images and the one that you save them in a the system. And then front end display the images from this external location. Um, what you would usually do in this case? You would usually save them somehow else. So to save the reference and do not save the images itself. So you're not using the media gallery mostly. So the standard uh, way of the saving images into Adobe Commerce backend. Um, you would just save the reference and then you would need to change the endpoints or create probably the new endpoints for the front end team to read those values and to render them. And that's quite a bunch of work. So first of all, you create in the Magento module and this module have to change the API to provide let's say images um, and the front end team have to change the implementation for all locations where image has been used to read the images from another source which is not the funniest task to do. Um, you can minimize the effort for the front end team just by creating the Magento extension that will replace let's say so using the standard graphql output and just will load images not from the standard storage but load images from the some attribute which contain the, the images URLs. and uh, yeah that's the use cases i want to tell you how you can solve without again creating any code by using the api mesh and uh, for that, let me let me show you. That's not so complicated. Um, as I thought, I thought it's complicated. Um, so let's uh, let me share my, my screen. So what did that? So let's have a look. We have no, that's wrong. That's Adobe Camera System, but uh, I just want to show you how it looks like. Um, so we locked in in the admin, I don't need to tell you that, you know that already. Um, let's have a look on some product, oh, I have here the demo product I created and uh, you already can see it here, but so let's have a look. So images and videos, empty and uh, there is an attribute with external images. So the setting would contain just the URLs. URLs 
to the images so we stored somewhere else but not nice let's see if we're not an image by the way oh let's cut ah oh, whatever leave it um somewhere else but not in your system and if you will try the graphql endpoint we just created some time ago and try to fetch the product information i hope we have it somewhere uh that's it by the way let's paste it here it's our demo product and uh yeah that's our external images uh and uh then here we have the media gallery yeah so what do we want to do we want to put those value into the values which are part of the media gallery let me reorganize it a bit honestly just for my just to have them one close to another and that's our external images so this one is empty because we're not using it and that's our images set for that let's go to create some mesh file and i have it definitely prepared don't be surprised i guess you're not surprised so we have uh, here our standard endpoints which i showed before it's the rest and graphql technically you don't need even the rest one let's make it easier um, and what are we doing? We create additional resolvers. And those resolvers allow us to modify the incoming or outcoming data of the request. It's not the most comfortable stuff because here, I mean, you can define also the external path to, to, to the resolver. I didn't try it yet. Maybe there will be another video on this one. But uh, you have to define like resolver. So it's your path and that's your path they have to match. So because it then I assume it's taking the file, creating this file with this content on the server and then placing the content inside. And that's pure JavaScript content inside. If you want to see how it looks like, it looks like the following. Um, and what are you doing here? So you define the resolver for the type. Type in our case is a simple product. If it's something else, you need to align it. Then you define the selection you need to have. So it's our media gallery, it's external images, it's a product name and product SKU. I mean, you can even skip those if you don't need them. Um, and then you're doing a very simple operation. You just split your external images value by the comma in this case, and then you, re you return the another value. Uh, so you return the, the URL for product image type name, and this URL is not anymore part of the, uh, the standard gallery, it's a part of the external image so of, of an attribute which contain uh, external image and that's uh, that's it let's give it a try Stuck. so and now let's uh, let's update the mesh I mean uh, the option is only one here AO RPA mesh update mesh uh, resolver that's our new file and uh, yes I want to override it that's uh, it so we sent uh, the new requests let's check a status it may take some time usually but yeah here is already telling it was successfully built and uh, let's then give it a try so what we've got as you can see the same uh, the same input but got already another result so we had here three urls inside uh, and now we have a media gallery available so we have um, url we have a label which is now coming from the product name and you also can let's say define anything else you want there uh, position is able to fall so the standard elements of the standard graphql schema which allow to your front end to not do anything because they just proceed to use the same functionality 
it's allow you to easy import them so you don't need to create the, let's say custom importers that parse the stream get a file save it somewhere and so on just can push it all in one text attribute you can add any other option there and you can by this example i just want to show that you can align any input output um, okay in this case we align the output we may have another one when we change an input input uh, but it's quite easy then you don't need development again just a javascript configuration and we, we, we've done it within don't know how many minutes um, yeah okay sorry i spent some time to prepare it but it's still quite quite easy coding i would say yeah uh, that was another example how you can use api mesh again as i told before subscribe ask your questions drop me some use cases or examples you want to hear about i will be happy to try them out find out if i don't know something how to build one another use case and then uh, maybe yeah give you an answer and uh, record another videos on those topics have fun bye bye